Well, despite weeks of loud protest against police brutality around the nation and right here in South Florida, we're seeing it all over again. Earlier this week, a graffiti artist was killed in Miami because police say he was running away from the scene. In the neighborhood, people knew him as Dems, his nickname there. Police say Delbert Gutierrez just happened to get run over by a police officer driving a squad car. In their report, they called it an accident. When police showed up, they found him, as they say, tagging a building with graffiti and spray paint, and Gutierrez started to run away. And depending on the amount of damage, graffiti artists could often face between 60 days or up to 15 years in jail paying for their crimes. But Gutierrez won't get that chance to due process. He died in a nearby hospital from those injuries. Now, there was no video camera in the car or on the officer's uniform to corroborate the police report. In other news, Florida did it again. And this time, it's not something to be proud of. Another month leading the entire country in foreclosures. 13 of the last 14 months, the Sunshine State leads the nation in the gloomy category. It all started last year when state lawmakers passed a new measure making it easier for banks to foreclose on properties. Last month alone, 545 homeowners foreclosed on their homes, over 100 more than the month prior. Elsewhere, a struggle for control of charter schools in Lauderdale. City commissioners put their foot down in a purse strings power play. For at least the next six months, private and charter schools will, no, will have no access to any new tax money. In other news, the squeeze is on. During the next six months, commissioners are drawing up new plans to regulate and penalize those poor performing schools. Any private schools that don't meet the education standards. Broward Schools Superintendent Rob Runsey says he's on board with a new plan. In fact, he would tell other cities to copy Lauderville's approach. Mayor Richard Kaplan pointed out some of these charter schools can get a little over-eager or independent when they're getting started. He says that poses a problem to parents and students alike. Kaplan said they don't come to us for approval for a charter school until one or two months before it's supposed to open. They're already registering students for a non-existent school, he says. And that, of course, poses some uh, risks there. In the last two years, 23 Broward charter schools were told they did not make the grade and they will be shut down by the state. Big money changing hands in Miami-Dade. Developers of a proposed movie studio near Miami Gardens are in line to receive a $10 million grant from the county. The money comes from an economic development fund that was controlled by Miami-Dade County commissioners. Now, this project would replace three nonprofit agencies now located at the 20,000 block of 47th Avenue. The grant still needs appro approval from the full commission. Mayor Carlos Jimenez took some heat from critics for his controversial economic development program, this big money deal would be the second largest to date under the mayor's allowance. You know, it's not every day you hear something like this. Dredge workers were busy on the job at a Miami port when they stumbled across an old historic relic. Buried right there underneath one of the port ship basins, they found a Spanish war cannon. Historians say 14 other similar cannons were also found in the same general area almost 100 years ago in 1919. Now, Secretary of State Ken Detzner says the cannon is being restored in the conservation lab before it will be put out on display. And they believe, get this, they believe it dates all the way back to the 1700s. Well, it's shaping up to look like a cool weekend with lows in the upper 50s, sunny and partly cloudy, but we shouldn't see any rain until later on next week. Here's a quick look at what's to come in your local four-day weather forecast.